Hello, my minnow ladies. <laughs> it's me again, Menopause Barbie, giving you tutorial number 77 of Menopause, your management, your way now and for the rest of your life. You know, today I'm going to present menopause to you in a completely different light. You see, I contemplate a lot of things, things that most people just accept as they are, but I question everything, especially things that just don't make sense to me. For instance, why do we say reckless driving spelled R-E-C-K-L-E-S-S? -S? Shouldn't it be wreckful driving? And shouldn't we spell it W-R-E-C-K-F-U-L? I mean, it seems to me that reckless driving would mean driving without wrecks. And wreckful driving would mean driving with wrecks. <laughs> and why do we drive on a parkway and park on a driveway? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now you have an idea of the thoughts that float around in my head. You know, my brain never takes a break. So I've been thinking about menopause as an estrogen deficiency state. And you should watch this video because it could be the most critical one of all in the way you think about menopause and estrogen. Now, I know you already have preconceived ideas about menopause and estrogen, but I want you to set those aside for now. I want you to view menopause differently. I want you to think of it as an estrogen deficiency state. A deficiency state is any situation in which your body lacks something that it needs to function properly. And there are all sorts of deficiency states. A vitamin deficiency is when you don't have enough of a particular vitamin. For instance, if you're deficient in vitamin C, you'll develop a disease called scurvy. And after about a month with inadequate vitamin C, you begin to notice symptoms such as feeling tired and soreness in your arms and legs and curly hair. Okay, I know what you're thinking. No, my arms and legs aren't sore and I don't feel tired. Eventually with scurvy, you'd notice symptoms that indi indicate inadequate red blood cells. So you'd have things like bleeding gums because of gum disease and bleeding from your skin. And as scurvy worsened over time, you would start noticing poor wound healing, personality changes, and eventual death from infection or bleeding. You know, nowadays scurvy is very uncommon in developed countries and treatment is really simple. You just take vitamin C supplements by mouth. Easy, easy. And you'd notice improvement in your symptoms in a matter of days with complete recovery in just a few weeks. And nearly every vitamin has a syndrome associated with a deficiency of that vitamin. And you treat every single one of them by replacing the deficient vitamin. Whatever it is, you just replace it. So, that's why there are so many multivitamin formulations in stores these days. You know, people's diets aren't very good, so there's all these multivitamin formulations so that you get all your vitamins without having to worry about it. And they can compensate for or prevent vitamin deficiencies by taking a multivitamin. Plus, there are all sorts of added supplements to foods in order to prevent vitamin deficiencies. Here's a biggie. What about diabetes, type 1? It's a deficiency of insulin. And without insulin, your blood sugar levels are too high. And what happens when your blood sugar levels remain too high? Well, a lot of things, including blindness, nerve damage, kidney failure, skin ulcers, stroke, heart disease, diabetic coma, and even death. You know, diabetes is probably the worst of all the deficiency states, and unfortunately it's all too common. But how do you treat it? You take insulin. It's easy. You take insulin. Here's another one. Hyper 
hypothyroidism. Hypo means too little, and thyroidism means thyroid hormone. So hypothyroidism means too little thyroid hormone. This is a common problem for menopausal women, and I'll be giving you a tutorial on it way later in the series. So what are the symptoms of hypothyroidism? Well, you have inability to tolerate cold temperatures, fatigue, constipation, depression, and weight gain. And once again, treatment is simple. You replace what's missing, thyroid hormone. I happen to have thyroid, hypothyroidism, and this is my thyroid hormone. <laughs> and you know, we even have supplements added to our food so that we never become deficient in all sorts of important nutrients. Have you ever wondered why your salt is iodized? It's so that you never deal with a deficiency in iodine. And do you use a toothpaste with fluoride in it? Most of them have fluoride in them, and the fluoride is added to prevent tooth decay. Just walk through the grocery store and look at how many of the foods are fortified with something. So I ask you, how is estrogen deficiency any different from any of these other deficiency states? Did you notice that these symptoms of other deficiency states can sound somewhat like the symptoms of menopause? See, I've been renting some of my brain space to this quandary lately, and I wonder why it is that women wouldn't choose to live with the deficiency of a vitamin, or insulin, or thyroid hormone, but they seem to be okay with the idea of living with estrogen deficiency. For some women, it's not only okay, it's acceptable or even expected. So why would it be normal for you to live with estrogen deficiency? Why is estrogen different from all these other substances in terms of deficiency? Well, you know, it isn't. The fact is that nearly every part of your female body is dependent on estrogen, and without it, you have all sorts of symptoms that manifest in all areas of your body, head to toe. And without estrogen, you have all sorts of symptoms that manifest in every manner, physical, emotional, psychological, and social. You have short-term symptoms that disrupt your quality of life, like the hot flashes, night sweats, insomnia, fatigue, forgetfulness, mood swings, irritability, depression, cravings for sweets, carbs, and alcohol, breast pain, joint stiffness and joint pain, dry skin, hair loss on your scalp, hair growth where you don't want it, vaginal dryness, urinary tract infections, urinary incontinence, weight gain, decreased sex drive, acne, and headaches. That's a long list. And you have long-term diseases that can end your life, like heart attacks, osteoporosis, breast cancer, uterine cancer, ovarian cancer, and Alzheimer's disease. So why is it controversial as to whether or not to replace estrogen? And why have women been scared to death about the risks of estrogen and left in the dark about the benefits of estrogen? Have you ever heard the saying, diamonds are a girl's best friend? Well, it's not true. It's estrogen. Estrogen is a girl's best friend from puberty until death. So maybe you're thinking, well, why replace estrogen when menopause really isn't a disease? Do you know what the word disease means? Dis is Latin, and it means away from. Ease is French, and it means ease. So together, the word disease means away from ease. So what do you think? Does menopause take or keep women away from ease? And if it does, is it an estrogen deficiency state that warrants estrogen replacement? Your answer is the only one that matters for you. So next, you might ask, well, why would Mother Nature make us become estrogen?
estrogen deficient at middle age if she didn't intend for us to live out the rest of our lives in an estrogen deficient state. Isn't it natural to live without estrogen for the second half of our lives? And here's the answer to that. Good old mother nature didn't intend for you to live half of your life without estrogen. She intended for you to die at about age 47 before you ever reached menopause. The only reason you live longer than you're supposed to live according to Mother Nature's plan is because of advances in medicine and science. You were never supposed to live in a menopausal state at all. You were supposed to die. Did you know that the vast majority of animals don't have menopause? In fact, the only animals on Earth that experience menopause are killer whales and pilot whales. You see, Mother Nature says, how are a bunch of non-reproductive menopausal animals going to contribute to procreation? They aren't. So Mother Nature makes sure most animals die as soon as they've finished reproducing. So humans are defying Mother Nature's laws by living long enough to experience estrogen deficiency at menopause. So how do you manage that? Do you prefer to live in an estrogen deprived state for the rest of your life? Or do you prefer to replace the deficiency? You see, one of the great things about all this education I'm giving you is that I'm teaching you how to compensate for estrogen loss even if you don't want to use estrogen itself. The goal is to find a way to give your body the benefits that estrogen used to provide. And you can do that with either actual estrogen or possibly with something non-hormonal. But you need to compensate somehow. I can tell you that if men suddenly became deficient in testosterone, they replace it faster than you can say hot flash. <laughs> ATM would stand for automatic testosterone machine and they'd be on every street corner, in every building, and in every home. Maybe you're wondering why men don't have testosterone deficiency as they age. And if you're wondering that, I'm so proud of you because it means you're really, really, really thinking. And here's the answer. Men do lose testosterone as they age. But unlike women, who lose pretty much all our estrogen, men do not lose all their testosterone. Their testosterone decreases, but it never completely disappears. Here's a graph showing this. Here's the testosterone loss, and it never, ever, ever gets to zero. So that's one reason they don't suffer an onslaught of symptoms of testosterone deficiency. And here's the other reason. Men lose their testosterone gradually over time, not suddenly. That slow, gradual weight of loss enables their bodies to adapt to the lower levels of testosterone. It's not like that for women. Look at this. Women lose almost all our estrogen suddenly. This is the big difference. So that rapid loss of estrogen at menopause is a deficiency that almost mimics withdrawal symptoms. Have you ever seen or heard about someone going through drug or alcohol withdrawal? It's drastic. It's almost intolerable. Well, estrogen loss at menopause is somewhere in between deficiency and withdrawal. In essence, estrogen loss at menopause puts your body into a state of shock. So the slow, gradual, and incomplete loss of testosterone in men is nothing like the relatively rapid, sudden, and complete loss of estrogen in women. And you know what? As, as you know, by our very different natures, Men and women go about dealing with problems quite differently. Women use feelings and men use logic. So we women lose our estrogen and how do we respond? We become fearful 
of estrogen and we decide that we should live without it. But if men suddenly lost their testosterone, do you think for a minute they decide testosterone is dangerous? I mean, give me a break. Of course not. They respond with logic. They fix it. In other words, they replace it in a minute. If men's testosterone disappeared like women's estrogen does, they certainly would not have handled it with the complacency we've shown. Not only would they replace it, they'd give themselves all an extra boost and they would have become so aggressive that they probably would have made a huge mess of the world by now. <laughs> These differences between the genders are fascinating, aren't they? But back to estrogen. I've given you multiple tutorials on all sorts of estrogen sources. And you've already learned a lot about the symptoms of both excesses and deficiencies of estrogens. And we've talked about the hype and all the scare tactics about estrogen. And soon we're going to go through each and every one of those symptoms of menopause in great detail. And after that, we'll discuss all those disease risks that are affected by how you manage your menopause. And you'll be able to consider this estrogen deficiency quandary from many different perspectives. You see, my goal is to get you thinking rather than acting impulsively to something you heard or read. I want you to know the facts that enable you to answer questions and analyze the answers. As always, all the decisions are your own. I just want to expand your mind a bit and get you to think analytically in the process. The only opinion that matters is your own, and in my book that will never change, but I want you to have facts with which to make those decisions. So why do we drive on a parkway and park on a driveway? And I don't want you to drive wreckfully on either one. <laughs> Let all these thoughts linger in your brain for a while, okay? Come back and see me in a week, and until then, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Make comments in the, in the comments of the video and I will respond to them all. Until then, I'll see you. Bye.